Hello, brothers and sisters in Heart to Willis family. May the Lord give us the grace to be obedient to His will and ready for a bountiful harvest. On my second day of retreat, I was looking forward to a quiet, peaceful time with Jesus. However, I forgot we had an outreach today. And although I wasn't going, there were too many calls coming in with those who were and were in need of my assistance or attention. Then I was also getting texts from one of our priests with the questions they had. And Father Derek was calling as well to instruct me on some things he wanted done whilst he was away. I couldn't put my phone down for five minutes without ringing. I found myself frustrated to say the least, and I could feel anxiety creeping as time was passing by. And I knew I had a lot I wanted to get accomplished today. After receiving the Lord, I came before him. Good morning, Jesus. This was an interesting morning. Too many distractions that I could count. I'm sorry for my attitude and getting frustrated by the constant interruptions. Papa God began, My beloved, you're learning to prioritize all things. When a soul is in need and I bring them to you, even in prayer time, remember we're doing all things together. Let's help them together rather than being resentful and showing them off. I welcome all to myself. Remember that. Well, Lord, when can I know it's a distraction or temptation from the enemy? You know, to get involved in ministry rather than staying in prayer. You will know when you feel a strong urge that something has to be accomplished now, finished now, or dealt with immediately. You can know that the sense is from the devils. But when it's a soul needing help, especially one of your children, take a moment and let's help them through what is going on, and then back to me. And then come back to me. Or I should say, then we'll come back together to continue to enjoy one another's presence. There's much on your mind, my little one, much you're caring. Leave all things to me. Lord, it just seems like so much to do once again. Well, this is a season of you bearing great fruit. Put me first, our time and prayer first, and be diligent with what is set before you, and use your time wisely. Truly obedience to my wills, I being cheek to cheek, the nearness of our souls, our spirits, our hearts are indeed one moving in union together seamlessly and peacefully. I give you my peace. Now peace, my little one, peace again. I start to feel anxiety about everything. You are in the right directions with what you have discerned. And as an aside, guys, we went to my uncle to make a few purchases for our home garden. And he mentioned to us that our family has a huge acreage of land. And he'd like for us to till the land and farm because no one's interested. This is over 500 acres of land. I immediately felt overwhelmed, red flags, as sirens were going off in my head. No, we're moving away from the mission of the city of God again. Abort, abort. I could see Father Derek on the other hand, his eyes open and light bulbs going off. I thought, no. <laughs> However, I'm learning this man is truly a man led by the spirit of the Lord. When will I learn? He already knew what to farm and what we'd use it for. And I was still feeling cautious and stop signs in my heart. But I went to Lord about it and got, what do you know, joy, that Father Derek was doing the right thing. And this was the Lord behind this as well. I just thought, how's all of this going to work out, Lord? Is it not too much for us? Guys, why do I continue to ask the same question when I already know the answer? Pray for me. So now I'm in awe of the Lord giving us this opportunity. As I patiently wait for us to begin the work of the city, <clears throat> As a patient wait for us to begin the work of the city of God on the land, it seems Jesus is providing wonderful hands-on training lessons for us before we do that. Papa God continued, I'm building this community one step, one direction, and one opportunity at a time. Stop trying to figure me out, and you just be grateful for all that I'm doing and all that I bring your way. I do want you to cultivate your family's land, but do not build on it. It's not your own, but rather use it to plant. Your husband is a man of great wisdom, a grace I've given him. Continue to trust his leading more and more, especially as you've been praying for him. I will bless the endeavors in which they set to do there. Of course, all things do come with opposition, but encourage him in this. Where they grow, they will be blessed and harvested to be used to support this work and mission. I know you've been concerned with that, but remember I'm the holder of his heart. As you continue to encourage, love, and support, and most importantly, be faithful to me, his heart will turn more and more to see why I've given him his gifts, his anointing, and these opportunities is to be of service to my people and those in need. 
Begin praying into all of this now, the labors, the land, and the harvest. Also get busy in raising funds for the young men on the street. You have no idea how I'll use this ministry to become such a blessing in their lives and draw them much closer to me. This will go far beyond them. This is only the beginning. Pray for them daily, beloved little one, and take them into your heart with a mother's love. Pray for your cousin as well. There are many dynamics working against what I've called you to do. Be faithful to pray and faithful with this outreach. Trust that you do what I have said in obedience. I will do the rest. You not lack any provision for all that is needed. For the soul, for that soul, she's one of my prized possessions and a pure and beautiful soul is she. Both of them are. That prayer pleased me this morning to not show any partiality or favoritism towards either soul. They're both beautiful in their own right. Mother them, nurture and foster their gifts by continuously encouraging them and giving them opportunities. Also take them into your heart. They'll be faithful sisters, friends, and fellow servants for this work. You have the right inspiration to allow her to share her testimony and proceed by helping her to get an invocational school for computer education. It will come in handy for what I will have her do. Thank you for your counsel, Lord, and thank you for Humble. And guys, that's the name of our vehicle. It's a wonderful truck, but inside, with the engine, needs a bit of work. But thank you so much for this vehicle and provision to provide always for our needs, Lord. Papa God responded, Break any curses over this vehicle and fix it up as you can, but know it will last you a while. You're welcome, my beloved little one. I am a providential father, and you'll lack nothing. You stay faithful to me. Thank you so much, Papa. Do you have a word for your flock? Papa God continued, Bounty, bountiful the harvest will be for all my brides. Do not delay in doing what I've asked. Your obedience to me is everything. Therein lies all your hope, your joy, your dreams, if you would, but trust me. Some of you tell me, I am surrendered, Lord. I'll give you everything, anything you ask. But when I ask something of you, something that is not agreeable, or doesn't make sense to you, you rather recoil in hesitation and fear and stay in self-will. Self-will is a place of comfortability and justification. It can even turn into, oh, I'm just waiting on the Lord to bring me clarity, when you already know what I want you to do. I've made my will known to you, but because it doesn't fit what you expected or desired, you drag your feet and delay. Sometimes, my beautiful doves, peace only comes after your obedience. I do all of this to test you. Will you listen to me, or will you rather follow your own reasonings? For those who have chosen to continue to say yes to me amidst contradictions, lack of understanding, or even lack of faith, I will bless you and increase you. Your fruit will be plenty. Because every step of obedience is like root planted deep that will grow branches and vines to yield fruit for you and my kingdom. The fear that you have, my brides, will continue to paralyze you and eventually render you useless for the greater works that I have in store for you. For those who love me and will do my will. O oh, my sweet little ones, do not allow the enemy to steal from you any longer. As you sit and wait and delay, he's taking spoils, one by one from you. Graces, gifts, and eventually your anointing. Do not allow him to. I'm leaving it up to you to decide, for you to cooperate, and for your obedience to my known will. Sometimes your attachments get in the way, so you're unable to clearly discern what I desire, because your desires are much too strong. When you get to that place of honesty with yourself and with me, I can help you by simply saying, Lord, the truth is I'm attached to this thinking or decision. Please make me willing to be made willing and ready for your answer alone. Then I will swiftly come to your aid to make all things clear for you. My beloved brides, hope against hope. Trust and believe my love for you, that I'm far better than you think. And there isn't anything I've asked of you that I haven't already made provision ready to ensure that you accomplish and fulfill it. I also have the necessary graces to assist you to do all that I ask. My heart is open, waiting for you in anticipation of all that I have in store for you. Wild grapes, fruits of assorted kind, many of you will yield. You are a cluster of my choicest fruits, yielding the oil of my love and intimacy for all to taste and see. This season is like one standing under a ripe apple tree. Put your baskets out for a catch, because a harvest is soon upon you all. And that was the end of Jesus' message. So family, I'll be sharing two campaigns the Lord is wanting us to raise funds for. 
a medical testing treatment for the young men we minister to every Friday on outreach. There are about 50 of them and more, and 50 other mothers and children who are in need of medical attention. Ghana is very expensive, and we want to partner with a doctor friend who's from the U.S. to put a medical outreach together by the end of this year or beginning of next year, depending on how soon we can get the funds so we can treat the boys. We are in need of 5000 to make this happen, and we'll have the details of this soon on the channel via video. Then there's, this, then there's Sister Ella. She has been such a support here in Ghana, such a great helper and friend, and the first Ghanaian employee slash volunteer for Heart Duos Africa. She does everything from helping me clean, cook, wash clothes, helping us with the outreach, evangelism, doing Bible study, and helping with the children's ministry in this area. She lives in a dilapidated building in one room with her two small children and younger brother. No pillow, but an old, very worn-out bed. The Lord has instructed us to help her to get her own place and also put her back into vocation school for computers because we believe she'll be the liaison here in Ghana when we have to do missionary traveling or leave Ghana for any reason. She will continue on with the ministry to ensure that things get done. She also has such a powerful testimony and is a true overcomer, such a beautiful soul inside and out. I'll be sharing her video and testimony on the channel as well to raise funds to get her apartment and put her in school. God bless you, family. Be in anticipation for the next message.